But the dominant story has been uh, Sunday Night Football, the fallout from Philadelphia tanking um, mid-game and determining that it wasn't worth it to try to beat uh, the football team, even though they were trailing by three, and they pulled Jalen Hurts for Nate Sudfeld. Yeah. Um, because the priority was getting Nate Sudfeld some burn. Um, and so we have roasted, the country has been roasting Doug Peterson ever since. So there were some reports that players, defensive players, had to be restrained yeah. or something to that effect from approaching Doug Peterson. But there were also reports that on the sideline, veteran center Jason Kelsey confronted Doug Peterson. Those are the reports. Well, word, confronted. Yes. J well, Jason Kelsey, he spoke for the record or wrote for the record uh, on Instagram. So, uh, get comfortable. We're going to do a little reading right quick. Here we go. Thought I would clear the air just to clarify and more accurately depict what happened during the game on Sunday. At the end of the third quarter, I was told on the bench that Sudfeld was going in the game. I went up to Doug and asked him if he was taking Hurts out. He said, yes, I think Nate's earned the right to play. I said, everyone else is staying in? He said, absolutely. I then went to find Suddy, started taking snaps on the sideline with him, called the other linemen over, and had them listen to his snap count to make sure everyone was on the rhythm of his cadence, and then went out for the next drive. Kelsey continues, at no point was anything from me or anyone else confrontational. We all knew leading into the game that Sudfeld was told to be ready to play and that Doug wanted to see what he could do in a game situation. All of us during the week leading up were excited for Nate, a guy that has been with us for four years to get an opportunity in a real game to show the world what he can do. We all have complete confidence in Nate as a player. There's a reason he's been here this long and a reason the team brought him back. And that's because we feel like Nate is a guy we can win with. I understand the optics of how it looked, and I'd be lying if I wasn't a little surprised given the circumstances that the move happened when it did. But every one of us did our best, and all of us believe when we, that we can win with Nate Sudfeld. It was a difficult situation to be put into, especially when you have a 10-year veteran center who doesn't snap the ball to you accurately on your second drive of the game. I know we can win games with Nate because I know Suddy can play. It didn't work out Sunday, but as always, that's not just on him. Uh, Michael, I'll just say Jason Kelsey most definitely has a career in politics when his playing days are over. Your thoughts? Yeah, it's great. The, 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 the good kind of politics. Not, not the kind of politics that we're seeing today, right? All right. So... Mike, this does not change. You asked me if it changed, or I think you'd be a couple of minutes ago. Does it change the way you feel about the situation? Does not change yeah, the way I, I feel. Yeah, I'm sorry. About During the break, I did. Yeah. Does this change how you feel about? Yeah. It? This, now, now that he's said his piece, do you feel? Do, does it change? No, your I, I love. I, I love. I love what Jason Kelsey said there. And not only do I love that, I love what he said a couple of weeks ago. Do you, do you remember this? He was talking about tanking in the NFL. This is long before we we had Philadelphia. Uh, Philadelphia and the Washington football team on the national radar. He had this conversation about what they were playing for. And, and he had this very eloquent kind of statement, this monologue about you, you go out there to win. You go out there to win, whether you're fighting for the playoffs, you go out there to win. As soon as, anytime you lace them up, doesn't matter because that's what we do in this game. We're just trying to win. So I think that's who he is. Um, and so I've always been a fan of his. I'm a fan of his, just his whole sen sensibility. And him, I think him that's and his how brother. he feels. Yeah. What's that? Him well, and his brother. I don't know about that. I, I, think, I think Jason, Jason has got the career in politics and, and Travis, Travis has the career in entertainment. 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 entertainment, yeah, exactly. All right. Yeah. Everything he said there is true, but it doesn't change anything. We were told to be prepared that, that, that Sudfeld will be in the game. I don't think he said Sudfeld's coming in the game. We're going to be down by three with a chance to, to tie right. or take the lead. Right. So, right. yeah, you were told he could go in the game, but I'm thinking maybe you're told he could go in the game. It gets out of hand. You're blowing them out. You're getting blown out. Okay, put him in there for a couple of drives, a couple of series to see what he can do. And no, you're not confronting the coach. And that you let yourself off the hook there that it's not a confrontation. But you didn't. But you came back and told us 
that you were a little surprised at, at Sudfeld going into the game, even though you were told to expect it. So if you put all those, uh, th those uh, circumstantial pieces together, I think the story remains the same, that Doug Peterson did not give his team the best chance to win there. And Jason Kelsey, from what I'm able to hear, not putting words in his mouth, going based on what he has written and what he has said, he seems to be a guy who is all about winning, no matter what the circumstance is. And, and Doug Peterson didn't show us that on Sunday night. And there's also, I mean, we, we heard Miles Sanders say something different yesterday, which we, respond, we reacted to, you know, that nobody liked it, uh, and, you know, and, and people were surprised. Um, so I'll say this is a good job on the part of Jason Kelsey. He's being a good teammate. He's being a good soldier. Yep. He's being a good eagle. Good teammate. Okay. Um, so I appreciate what he was trying to do here. I think the thing is, so it, it doesn't change what we saw and how it felt. Uh, it doesn't change. I'm sorry. With all due respect to Nate Sudfeld, I mean, I quote Unforgiven. I, I, love the, I love to quote Unforgiven. I love to quote the why. It deserves got nothing to do with it. Okay? Like, Jalen Hurts deserved to try to win the game. Your organization deserved to see if Jalen Hurts could give you something to think about this offseason. If you are, aren't already thinking about moving on from Carson Wentz. The rest of those players deserve to have their efforts that weekend earlier in that game to make it a three-point game. They deserve to experience a win. They deserve the same type of jubilation that people like me didn't care that the Jets experienced when they got that first win against the Rams. Okay, they didn't go through practice and all week thinking we just gonna throw this game to get Nate Sudfeld some run, you know. Um, so it's not just about one guy. So with all due respect to Nate Sudfeld, yeah, he might be a good backup, he might be a good teammate. He might be. If you thought you could win with Nate Sudfeld, Nate Sudfeld, if anybody thought they could win with Nate Sudfeld, he'd have been playing by now. Okay, so let's let's just miss me with the <laughs> right. Nate Sudfeld appreciation right. tour here. Okay, he's not. You know, he ain't Tony Romo waiting for his opportunity. Okay. Um, however, all that having been said, moving forward, I think this goes back to the conversation you and I had yesterday, which was, what does this mean for Doug Peterson? What does it mean for that locker room? And I think what ends up happening instinctively, when, when one of theirs is under attack, and to this point, there's never been any kind of rumblings, you know, there was one report about the fractured relationship between Carson Wentz and Doug Peterson. There's no rumblings that the team had quit on Doug Peterson or didn't like Doug Peterson or had turned on Doug Peterson or he had lost the team prior to this week. And so when one of theirs is under attack, that's what they do. So I, I go back to I don't I, 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 don't, I don't think I get I don't think I think to me what Jason Kelsey wrote speaks to what I was saying to you yesterday is I don't think it's over for Doug Peterson based on Sunday in terms of his locker room credibility. I think there is some healing to be done, and there are some still raw emotions, but I do believe that certain veteran players, some, some may never forgive him, but veteran players, professionals, will move forward yeah. so long as they're put in position to succeed, unlike Okay, Sunday. there we go. Right, as long as they're put in position to succeed. Uh, one, and I'm going to be in conversation uh, with the lower third here, and maybe I missed it. I don't think Jason Kelsey said no Eagles were confrontational. I don't, I don't think, think he said, said I wasn't I think he said, he said I wasn't I think he said he wasn't. Right. That, now, okay, that, that, that's the way I read it. He wasn't confrontational. Right. And so when you said hey, they, they circle they circled the wagons and, and protect their own, no, I think he's protecting himself because he doesn't want to be lumped in as somebody who was going at the coach. So he cleared his own name, and he stood up for a teammate. He stood up for... But in, but in the process, but in the process by saying that, hey, everybody knew what, what the deal was, I think implicitly that's him saying, listen, no, guys, this wasn't, he said everybody this wasn't as was bad as it made out to be. that Nate could be in the game. Not flat out, we're putting Nate in the game no matter what. If it's a tie game... We got a chance to win it. Nate's going to be in there on that final drive. Nobody said he, okay. we were told okay. that it could happen. No, you're but, right. It's not I, a complete think... uh, absolution. He's, you're right. He's not absolving him for the way he handled mm -hmm. it. And he even does say, he even does say, we read the whole thing word for word. He does say it was a tough position to be put in 
you know, it, it, was, it was weird for how I understand the optics. So, again, very politically correct, but you're right. He, he, he chose his words and wrote, wrote those words very carefully. He wasn't very saying, hey, carefully. back off my coach. You're right. And I think, I think Mike, in, in an organization, in, in football, we all say it. Okay, what's, what's the three most important things you got to have in football? You got to have a good ownership. You got to have a good head coach. You got to have a good quarterback. And you put those, those are your three pillars of the organization. Then everything else is built around there. So ownership, no problem. Maybe ownership and the head coach slash front office, ownership, front office, head coach, they're all in concert. And maybe Doug Peterson was told, hey, if you need to go out there and develop guys instead of just winning the game, it's all right. Not necessarily lose the game, but if you do lose the game and you develop people, that's a win for the Philadelphia Eagles. Maybe he was told that. So that's all set. But I'm telling you that... Trust is a big part of these relationships, and Doug Peterson already doesn't have trust with Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz doesn't trust and wants to be traded. He, we've, we've heard that a couple of times down the stretch. Hey, I don't want to be a backup. Uh, this relationship is irreparable with Carson Wentz. Jalen Hurts, I don't know how he feels about Doug Peterson. I'm guessing he's not very happy about it, that in the fourth quarter, a competitor, your starting quarterback, down by three points, is removed from the game uh, and, and replaced by the third-string quarterback. That's who he is, the third-string guy. Carson was un, uh, inactive that game, so he was a backup. But Nate Sudfeld is not their backup. He's their third quarterback. Yeah. And he's, re he's replacing your starter, your starter who had given you two touchdowns. I'm sorry. Like, Doug Peterson, if he doesn't, if he just says, I said what I said and I'm done with it, then he's done. The only way, as I said to you yesterday, the only way he gets Some that kind of back is yeah. he got, he's got to just come up and say, look, I was wrong. Or this is why I did what I did. And be, and be real about it. Because if you don't have trust, you don't have a team. And I know professionals yeah. and all this stuff. We're professionals too. Everybody's a professional, but there's some bosses that you just don't perform for because you don't trust them. Yeah, but There's but some I organizations that are dysfunctional this, because people in this, charge this, this set don't of have their best interests. This set of circumstances was so unique. I don't think it's something that you could extrapolate and say this is some kind of referendum or some kind of a flaw, inherent flaw, in how Doug Peterson approaches his job. In other words, Ooh. it's like, okay, you're, you're out of it. There's an overall organizational mandate that, hey, we're going to play Nate Sudfeld, even if it costs us a win, and we really would prefer the sixth pick versus the ninth pick. I don't think that that's something that you could, if you're a player, again, I'm just, I'm spitballing. If you're a player, you could step back and be like, man, you know what? I can't trust Doug Peterson now because, like, you know, come next year, I don't know if he called and plays, if he's if he trying to throw games or, or if he's, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know yeah. that, I don't know that it's, it's I do. I, it's, I do. I these, think so. These circumstances. You know why? You know, how do, how, you know what players It's not like he doesn't have a record to this point. It's not like, I, now I sound like I'm defending Doug Peterson. It's not like he doesn't have yeah, a record are, to this no, point. You, no, you don't sound to the like contrary. You're, you're doing it. You're doing a good job. No, but, I'm, you're, but, you're but, I, but I'm, I'm, I'm saying it's not like, oh, this is who he is. This is how he is. This is, it's not like this is, some, listen, it's not a good look for him, but I, I'm not sure if it's necessarily reflective of the way he goes about his, job. I think all they have to trust is that he is doing what's best for the team. You know, when it comes to this year, the job. This In this year, instance, he, he may not have. And by the way, I don't care if Carson, honestly, I don't care if Carson Wentz don't trust him. So what? Okay. Play better. All right. we, wouldn't have, we wouldn't have this problem. Okay. You want to get traded? Oh, okay, okay. No that problem. sounds good. Sure. That sounds good. <laughs> uh, this year, four wins, uh, two Two quarterbacks who probably are looking at him a little sideways, one much more than the other. And Wait, which the one? game. What? Well, well, oh, I'm about to say because more. Than well, I mean, listen, Hertz was literally looking at him sideways on the sideline when yeah. he pulled him. So, okay. <laughs> so he's yeah, got so. his two top quarterbacks are saying, yeah. What are you thinking? What are you doing? For different reasons. One guy lost his job, the other guy lost his job in the fourth quarter and then got it back. I, you know, okay. Um, so you have. That, that, that situation with the quarterbacks, you've got that game against Washington. But larger than that, look, players, what are play, players don't care about the draft. No, they don't. Like, it, 
I used to, I, I, I used to say to uh, some players all the time when I was working on uh, one of the books, I said, uh, just trying to, trying to uh, be, a, speaking of being political, I was trying to be a little political because I had some access that I, I, I gave my word that I was not going to give up some of the, yes. all the things that I saw, okay, until yeah. the, it was time for publication. So I saw some things, but then I'd see the players, and I just said to them, wow, it's amazing that you come in to the facility. You come in on the first floor. On the first floor, it's all about football operations and meeting rooms and the cafeteria and hanging out, and you're, and you're bonding with your coaches, your positional coaches. But one floor above you, there are dozens of people who come in every day looking to replace you. That's what happens with the scouting department. They're coming in. The draft, you know, we get excited about the draft. Players look at the draft and say, "That's they got eight draft picks. That's eight opportunities for somebody to replace me. I don't yeah. care about the draft. And so if Doug Peterson is thinking about the draft, when they're going out there trying to win a game, then he somehow, he's not with us. He's not one of us, right, no, because it's supposed to be the, lock, it's supposed to be the locker room. It's supposed to be the locker room versus the people upstairs. You're right. I just don't see this situation replicating itself as the only, this is me being an inter, eternal optimist. I just don't see these circumstances. I like your optimism. Itself. I like it. Yeah. This is a day for optimism. We need, opti we need some optimists.